Hi, how's it going? Sean from Outcast Angler. So today we're going to be fitting a new Lorance FS9 sounder into this Hobie kayak. I've actually got a, um, a little Barramundi kayak fishing cartel competition that I've been invited to. So I've been lent this kayak from a good mate of mine, Foggy, and it's time to get a sounder in there just to uh, better my chances on the day. So. Stay tuned, hopefully we can get it wired in before the afternoon storm set in. A bit of an unboxing of this unit. Not the most glamorous unboxing in the world. Battle through the main part of it. Let's have a look. Nice. Okay. What have we got here? So, instruction manuals. Excellent. Inside. Screen itself. A bit of a close look out in a sec. All the transducer and brackets and everything. screen quite a lot smaller unit very narrow compared to the old TI units let's bit of a look at the back transducer NMEA 2000 Ethernet cable and power cable pretty simple the screen itself Pretty sharp looking screen, buttons, SD card slot on the side, it's going to look sharp in the kayak, mount something like that, it's going to look good. Right, so straight up the back there's a couple of things I need to consider. Not so important on this because I've already got the trans, um, sorry, the display where I want the display located on the side. Like this ram bracket's already fitted into this kayak, so I'm pretty lucky there. I don't need to, to think about that. But if I had a new kayak and I was starting from scratch, depending on whether I was left or right handed, I'd decide what side of the, the um, kayak I want the sound to be on. For me, I'm right handed and I prefer all my electronics and I have it the same way in my boat on the right hand side. So I've really lucked in there with how that's going to, to mount. The second thing to consider is how I'm going to mount my transducer. So the FS transducers, they're quite quite a long transducer, quite wide, and they have the side scan capability. So you don't want to hang them over the side and then have one side just reflecting straight inside the kayak. So what I'm going to do is use a Railblazer transducer top style mount and this, I've already measured it up, will allow the transducer to get lower than, um, than the kayak itself. So another consideration is the mount that you use is whereabouts you're going to place that mount. Once again, I've locked in that the original mounting holes for this are already there and with the transducer fitted it's going to clear underneath the kayak quite, quite easily. So two, two big considerations that I don't really need to make but I had to confirm that they were going to work. So. That's good. Third thing to consider is where I'm going to run my cabling and in particular where I'm going to power it from. So there is a lot of uh, different battery options out there, some very nice specific small lithium battery power packs. Because I'm only borrowing this kayak and it's not my, um, you know, 
one day I'll get a really nice kayak, but today is not that day. I'm just going to use a uh, like a small motorbike battery or something like that. So probably going to mount it up in the front hatch up here. But if I had a small lithium type battery, I'd probably mount it in the center hatch and just up out of the way. Alright, I'm just going to line up the holes in the bracket. Hopefully. So I do. Always a good thing. Just going to start off with two for now. It's always a good idea to start start with mounting the, uh, the sounder and the reason being is you don't want to go um, running all your cables around and tying them all off and then only to realize that you don't have enough cable length so if you get your sounder mounted up nice and early then the rest of it will uh, fall into place and you can kind of work back from there so I'm just going to start very simply and obviously because the, the uh, kayak's going to be transported on the roof all this stuff needs it really needs to be able to come off or be hidden away um, where it's not going to affect um, you know me transporting it and potentially become damaged so just going to get me and stuff under there On that bracket, I do have a little bit of adjustment. It's nice and squeaky. Anyway, that, that's a good starting spot. The other good thing is if you get the, the sounder mounted up straight away, it's really good progress. It looks really good. Okay, so pretty simple with the kayak actually. All we've got is a transducer and power. That's all we really need in here. There's no fancy networking cables or anything like that. And and really installing it a um a sounder's pretty pretty simple. You mount the screen where you want it, you mount your transducer and you connect your electrical connections. So this is the power cable for the FS. I'll give you a to be honest, that would nearly just about do what I need to do, like just about reach the battery. One thing though, in, in a kayak especially, is you get this fuse holder. Now fuses are really important, um, just to protect the unit, um, you get a bit of corrosion or you know you accidentally short it out, that fuse is going to blow first before it blows any of the uh, display or anything like that. So it's really important that we connect that fuse in so we're effectively going to put a connection there and then we'll connect to the battery and that fuse is as close to the positive terminal of the, of the battery as possible uh, what else have we got in here? Got some other cool things in here got some blanking plugs for the, for the um, the outlets that you know we're not going to use got the fuse itself Lorenz give you a couple little terminal terminals like that um, probably okay to get you out of trouble for the first little bit but are really not going to keep the corrosion uh, from occurring so we're going to use something a little bit uh, different to that and that's about it we're really only interested in power and the transducer so that's our power um, receptacle. This is our transducer receptacle here. This is our NMDA2000 and this is our ethernet. I'm not gonna use this. It's a good idea just to put those caps on and just protect it. And the same again, yellow to yellow, that's pretty simple. And put that on there. 
that's just going to stop any water egress or anything like that from occurring especially being in a kayak quite close to the water you don't want anything splashing up in there so as i said before i'm lucky because this is already here i'm literally just going to reattach this mount and like i said earlier you just got to make sure that that transducer is going to be clear the bottom of the kayak some of the new hobie outbacks and pas and stuff like that they've got a little recess in the bottom retractable scupper um, that you can mount it into but these earlier ones and some other brands you need some form of mounting that transducer externally that's well, just the mount there and this is going to uh, I'm not sure put that in there and away we go and that's going to extend down and under okay so transducer wise kind of rocks up a bit, a bit like that um, bracket it's going to work like that and then that will sit in there like that so if you refer to your instruction manual, that'll that'll show you pretty clear. It's just a couple of bolts and a few screws and whatnot. But I'm not going to bore you to death with me showing you how to do that. So I'll quickly. Righto. So without boring you to death, quickly put the brackets and all this uh, trickery on here. It's pretty simple. And all I've done is just run simply a bolt straight through there and that's going to hold the transducer on the side of the yak a couple of cable ties around here and then I'll end up with an excess of, uh, of cabling which I'll need to, to hide or put somewhere but that's the transducer time to fit inside the, the yak Adjustment, slot in there, lock in place, do that up. Perfect. Yeah, give me a bit of a look at it. Okay. Right, hey. So, onto the wiring part. Um, like I said earlier, we do need to fit this fuse so what I'm going to do there's plenty of different connections like these but basically I'm just going to use a splice that splices the inner wires together and I'll give you a close up in a sec and then over we're going to put a heat shrink sleeve that slips over the top so we're going to crimp that down put the sleeve over and then heat shrink it down and that way that connection will stay in tip top condition you can solder it um, and put heat shrink over it, all that stuff is perfectly acceptable. This is just a quick, easy way for me to do it. Um, with the length of the cable itself, there's plenty of, of cable length there to run it to where, from where the, uh, the sound is mounted to where I intend to put the battery. So there's no reason for me to lengthen the cable at all or, or add anything extra on. So my connections are just going to be screw on terminals. So I'm just using a normal round terminal it's going to go on there and we're just going to crimp it in place and that'll be it really simple and effective
Righto, so that's pretty much the install. Sound is in, we've routed the cables, we've got the battery in, you know, transducers on, I think we're good to go. Might be time to uh, to see if she actually works. Alright, moment of truth. Moments of truth. Let's see how we go. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. Screen's nice and crisp. configure this device. Yes. Uh, what do we want? Sales meters, yep. Knots, nautical miles, meters. So you can set it up however you want, but that's what I prefer. Um, lakes, coastal. The majority of my stuff's coastal, but for this instance, it's gonna be lakes. Regular fishing. Finish. data source selection will be formed, connect, yep, okay, uh, I won't register it now, there we go, it's going to take a little minute to figure out where it is, fresh, da 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 da, Good. All looks pretty good to me. Time to go uh, give it a go, I think. Okay, thanks very much for uh, watching and um, hopefully you got something out of the install. Like I said, setting up a, a uh, sounder on a kayak is pretty simple. The instruction manuals are really, really handy for hints if you ever need, if you're not quite sure. Well, there's plenty of stuff on YouTube. Um, now it's time for me to get on the water, go do, you know, configure the transducers and just tweak it right in how I like it. And then hopefully we'll get onto a barra in a couple of weekends. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Hope you find a few fish. Catch us later.